Hi, my name is Amanda Chafin. I work at the Lane Community Technology Center in Hamilton, Ohio, and today I'm going to teach you how to 3D print an object. The web is full of kind designers and makers who have already uploaded 3D files for you to print. Thingiverse.com is one of the most popular free repositories of free 3D designs. To get there, first open up Chrome or another internet browser. Then type thingiverse.com into the address bar and press enter. And here we go. This is what the website looks like. Now, because it's Halloween, let's look for a nice Halloween themed object. I have a friend who likes to put up a nice Halloween themed tree each year. So I think today I'm going to look for a cute ghost ornament for my friend's tree. So I just type the words ghost ornament right up here in this internal search box here in the Thingiverse website. Make sure you don't type it here in the main address bar. You want to type it inside the Thingiverse website. And then you just hit enter. Now we'll just scroll down until we see a design we like. This one looks cute, so let's click it to learn more. Each Thingiverse item has a page that looks kind of like this, and if we scroll down, we'll find a few key items highlighted on each Thingiverse page. One thing that I want to draw your attention to is the license. This particular creator, Vectory, Let's see here, um, it has its licensing set up as a Creative Commons license, you can see that here. It's a Creative Commons license with attribution, non-commercial, and share alike permissions. So what does this mean? This means that you're allowed to use and share this object as long as you give the creator proper credit and as long as you don't make any money from it. Now I've given Vectory credit and established that I'm giving this item as a gift, not selling it. So we can move forward, secure in the knowledge that we're not accidentally violating anyone's intellectual property rights. Whenever you're using free objects like this or pictures, something from the internet, you want to make sure that you check the creator's license um, information because that's where they're going to tell you what you are and are not allowed to do with it. Another important tab to pay attention to is the Makes tab. So if we scroll up here, you'll see here this Makes tab and if you click it, what you see here are images that other creators have taken of this design after they printed it. Generally speaking, the more makes something has, the easier and better it is to print. So you can see here, this one is particularly helpful because you can see that there's a lot of support material that they printed with it. That That's fine, it just means that there are some, some support material that's built in that you have to break away and take off. And it's also it also means that the design might require some sanding at the end. So just be aware that there might be some post work done to be done on this. It won't just print perfectly. Which, again, that's fine, but that's why you check the makes because you want to know what you're getting yourself into. Now we're going to click the Thing Files tab so that we can download our STL file. See at the end here, this .stl, that is what you're looking for. That is the kind of file that we can work with. So once you have that, you're just going to click download, and you'll see it start to download right there. Now usually your downloads are going to download into your downloads folder, but sometimes people have them set up to go somewhere else, so make sure you know in advance where your downloads are going. Our next step is to open what's called a slicer. This is the software that tells your 3D printer what to do. So let's go ahead and close out of Thingiverse, and we're going to open Slicer. 
so we just closed out of Thingiverse and now we opened Slicer. This is what the Slicer environment looks like. And so what we're going to do, our first step here is to click add and open the STL file for our little ghost friend. So we're going to click add and there you see our ghost by Vectory. And we're going to click open. So as you can see, he's really big and we're not going to want to print him that big. So we're going to want to shrink him down to a manageable size. So if you right click and choose scale and uniformly, you can type in a size that you want. Now this is based on percent. So you can see right now he's 100%. So let's take him down to about 25% of his original size. Click OK. And there we go. He's looking a lot more manageable now. Now that we've sized him correctly, we can move around our workspace a little bit and see that he is hollow inside. That means we're probably going to need some support material, which is fine, we already knew that from looking at the makes before. Now without support material, um, he probably wouldn't print very well. Some of these upper layers will be printing over dead air, which would cause the filament to droop and turn into a mess that looks kind of like spaghetti, and we don't want spaghetti, we want a ghost. So supports are breakaway pieces of filament, like you saw in that make, um, that fit inside to support the object during printing. They get removed later, and so I'll just go over here to supports, and I'm going to support, I'm going to check supports everywhere, and we're just going to say yes, let's adjust the settings for supports, okay? I also don't want him to be too flimsy because I know I'll be digging support material out from the middle. So I'm going to set him at a 25% infill here. Um, now normally 10 to 15% is just fine for most prints and it'll save you filament. Um, but for this one, because I know there are going to be a lot of supports, I want to make him a little sturdier. And the other thing we're going to do here is we're going to select PLA. This is where you choose your filament. PLA is the most common kind of plastic, and that is the kind that we're going to be using. Uh, but you might use ABS or PETG, so make sure you choose whatever kind of filament that you're using here. Um, and then last, I'm actually going to choose Optimal here for my print settings. Um, Normally, most prints uh, fast will work just fine, okay? But I'm actually going to stick with optimal. And the reason I'm doing that is because you can see we have these little fine details here. Um, the little hook for him, and then his eyes and his mouth. And so I'm just going to get a little more detail. And what that's going to do is that's actually going to make each layer a little thinner. So fast is 0.2 millimeters. Optimal is 0.15 millimeters, detail is 0.10 millimeters, and then ultra detail is 0.05 millimeters, and that is the length. Now, the all well, the thickness really is what I'm getting at the thickness of each layer. So, now the thinner each layer is, the longer it's going to take to print. That's why this thicker one is called fast. But we're just going to go here with optimal, okay? So once we have our settings here the way I want them, with supports everywhere. All right, once we have those settings the way we want them, the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to change our filament settings, okay? So we're going to click this tab here that says filament settings. And I'm going to change my first layer to 217. And then my other layers here to 215. And then my first layer down here for the bed heat, I'm gonna change that to 65. Now these are all in Celsius. And as you get used to your own printer and filament, you'll come to learn which little adjustments work best for you. I find that for my printer, with my filament, and in my environment, printing at a slightly higher than normal temp leads to better bed adhesion. So now we're gonna go back here to our plater, and we're gonna click slice now. Now in this step, the software will create tiny cross sections, basically telling the printer what shape to lay down during each layer of printing. It's going to take a few moments. 
Uh, you'll see a status bar down here at the bottom where you did before, but this was kind of quick. Now when it's done, you can click the preview tab down here. See what our little ghost ornament will look like with supports. So here we go, this is what he looks like. Now we're going to export to G code. To export to G code, you'll want to make sure that you have an SD card already plugged into your computer. Then you're going to click export G code, that's right here, and save it to your SD card. So you can see here we're in this SD card. We're going to just click save. Again, you'll see the status bar down here. And now it's done. And when it's done, you can eject your SD card and take it to the printer. Before we slip our SD card into the 3D printer, let's make sure the printer is turned on. Here we go. We can also take this time to load our filament. Orange is a nice spooky Halloween color, so let's go ahead and load up a spool of orange PLA. To save ourselves some time, let's preheat to PLA now. We just click preheat, and then PLA, and then cut the tip of our filament at an angle. This makes it easier to thread through the extruder. It helps to keep a pair of wire cutters around for this step. Now we click load filament and guide our filament into the extruder. Slowly, filament melts and exits through the extruder nozzle. Now the machine asks whether or not the filament is the right color. If not, we just click no, and the filament keeps extruding. Sometimes we have to do this a few times when changing between filament colors to get the old color all out of the system. Then, when the color looks right, we just click yes. Now is a good time to clean the print bed. We just spray the print bed with some isopropyl alcohol, like this, and then wipe it down with a microfiber cloth. Now we can insert the SD card. With the SD card inserted, use the scroll wheel to select our little ghost friend's STL file, and then click. The 3D printer gets right to work calibrating itself and making sure that the bed heat and nozzle temperatures match the settings that we selected in our slicer program. The printer starts laying down layers of filament, slowly but surely building, in this case, our little ghost friend. There he is, fresh off the printer. We can see he still has some support material sticking to him. That's okay. It's really easy to remove. We just use our pliers or some wire cutters to carefully pull away the excess material. And there we are. We've 3D printed a ghost ornament for my friend's tree. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified of future video releases. We plan to release a similar video about laser cutting and etching in November. The Lane Community Technology Center is part of the Lane Libraries in Butler County, Ohio. You can call us at 513-785-2727, email us at techcenter at lanepl.org, or visit our website at lanepl.org. Thanks, and have a great day.